I am fascinated with our human ability to address invisible threats and how we turn the invisible into something tangible. Science helps us make the invisible visible, but not all of us have access to the science and the scientific tools. So how can we translate scientific understanding of invisible threats into behaviors that help us manage those threats? Imagine, for instance, if COVID were blue. So if you got COVID, you'd be breathing out blue. If you saw someone breathing out blue in a store, you would probably want to be wearing a pretty good mask. And also, you might shame people for exposing others to COVID blue. If you yourself were breathing out blue, you might hesitate before going into a, the public. And you might feel a little guilty if you did. And you'd probably wear a mask to assuage that guilt and try to conceal your blue from others to avoid a feeling of shame for exposing them. Guilt and shame are very powerful forces that compel pro-social behaviors. Now, here's an example of behavior that we've normalized to deal with an invisible threat. After you use a restroom, you'll wash your hands. Why? To address the invisible threat of germs. If you don't wash your hands, you might feel a twinge of guilt. And if you don't wash your hands in a public restroom around others, you might feel some shame. These forces maintain our pro-social behaviors. But there's more to it than just that. If there were no sink and running water, we couldn't do it. So infrastructure is an important component. Also, education. We all need to be taught about the invisible threat of germs and how to combat them. And it's helpful to continuously experience positive reinforcements like, thank you for washing your hands. In order to address invisible threats, leaders must recognize the need for education and infrastructure that makes it convenient for the pro-social behaviors that address the invisible threat before using those powerful forces of guilt and shame that normalize the desired behaviors that manage the threat in the long run. Kimberly, what are you thinking about invisible threats? Thanks, Matt. I totally agree with your perspective that it's important that um, we are, as leaders, are educating people, but also providing the resources and access to those resources for everybody to deal with those invisible threats. Um, because just resorting to shame and guilt is not an effective manner if we don't all have the resources. So thank you for sharing that. How can we see external threats if we first are not willing to shine the light on and see our own internal threats? Dave Sims says, and I quote, once something has been seen, it cannot be unseen. There's no going back to the person you were. Even if such a possibility did exist, why would you want to? I think it's ironic that we're talking about the seen and unseen in our podcast today. This May, we are experiencing two solar eclipses. An eclipse is where what has once been seen becomes, once, what has once become, what once is unseen becomes seen. The moon eclipses the sun for that brief moment and covers it up. But during this time period between the two eclipses, it's actually what is happening for a lot of my clients is um, emotions or feelings or, or hidden um, uh, situations are coming up for them and, and they're feeling this need to address all of a sudden. And it's just part of just the energy in the planets. So what happens if we started to identify, name, and journal those amygdala hijacking emotions and self-limiting stories that have so much control over us? By noticing what we're feeling, how we're reacting to those feelings, and what stories we're telling ourselves, we have now brought them into the light and they are seen. We can now take a step to do something about it. They are no longer invisible. This is part of the work me and my colleagues are doing with the positive intelligence training or PQ training we're doing, which is hosted by Shrazad. We are taking unseen saboteurs and noticing them every minute of our day and reducing their threat to our happiness and success, and it's working. This is also the basis of my coaching practice for my leaders. If we can't see and deal with the things within ourselves, self-awareness, how can we see and help that within others? And going even further, how can we deal with the external threats? For example, 
Those of my clients who recognized and accepted their fear of the unknown and lack of control during the pandemic faced and flowed through the pandemic much either easier than those who did not. Our capabilities begin with ourselves first. Leaders, in this double lunar eclipse, what is revealing itself to you in becoming unhidden? What feelings or behaviors are in your spotlight right now and demanding your attention to be healed? When you make that unseen seen, they will no longer have their power and threat over you. Juana, what are your thoughts on the invisible threat? Thanks, Matt and Kimberly. So today we're talking about making the invisible visible. Well, leaders honing their leadership skills know that the journey of growth traverses through the work of making the invisible visible. Those who lead from a foundation of self-awareness do the work to identify and address the invisible. Those thoughts, behaviors, decisions, and actions that sabotage your ability to be effective, sabotage your ability to lead effectively. To ensure that I am grounded in self-awareness, I am traversing a path of growth, working on addressing my invisible disruptors, bringing them forward, acknowledging how they manifest, and deconstructing their existence. The work requires opening your awareness and understanding about why these invisible landmines are present. I've read that self-awareness is the ability to take an honest look at your life without any attachment to it being right or wrong. Identifying and addressing the invisible should not be an exercise in judgment. It's work ensconced in a place without conditions. For some leaders, an invisible disruptor is the imposter syndrome. Those thoughts that undermine self-confidence and self-esteem, enabling a host of questioning one's capabilities. For me, the need to achieve can present as disruptive behaviors, a want to do more, be more, say more, spoiling any thoughts of, you know what, I have done my very best. Leaders, do the work. Be vulnerable in identifying your invisible obstacles. Your ecosystem inundates you on a daily basis with information and feedback about how you are performing. My colleagues and I have created a space, a safe space, to hold each other accountable for identifying our invisible saboteurs. Leaders, share and engage with us. What work have you done to identify your invisible saboteurs? How are you holding yourself accountable to address those invisible saboteurs? We look forward to your sharing below.